you want to get some, you can't have any of this. It's daddy's fault. But you know what? I'm kind of excited. Because, um... Oh boy. It's gonna be hot. Too hot? Not too hot? Is that okay for you? Alright. I'm kind of excited because I just signed up for a two-day track day out of Button Road. That's right. So I get an opportunity to beat my track record, my PR, and spend some time with my friends and my brother. Unfortunately, you don't get to come. Oh, that's hot, man. That's hot, bubba. That's hot, bubba. So, with that in mind, I was thinking about making a video. Dude, uh, really with the salivation stuff? Can... Uh, that... <laughs> oh my god, that's nasty, bro. That's, uh, so anyway, maybe we should make a video of what things you need to do to your bike to prepare for a track day. You like that? And maybe all the things that you need to bring so that your track day can be as enjoyable as possible. Maybe we should do that, huh? Maybe we should do that. Ah. All right, all right. So, let's talk about what you need to do in order to get your bike ready for your first track day red flag. Red flag. Red flag. and the things that you need to bring for your first track day so it could be as enjoyable as possible so I, my bike just came back from my second track day out at button willow so all the things that i did in order to prepare uh for that day, let's talk about it. The first thing I did was I changed the oil. Um, I changed the oil because I try and change the oil on my bike every uh, 2,500 miles. Twin, twin, twin! Wow. So it was due, and I knew that I was gonna try and run relatively hard. Um, at least for me. Uh, so I, I changed the oil. I also checked all the fluid. I checked the uh, rear um, reserve brake, brake fluid. I checked the front reserve brake fluid. Um, I took off my mirrors. Not that you need to, uh, but a lot of people do take off their mirrors and they put on block offs. Um, you can do what I did before and just get some bolts and some uh, washers and secure the plastic uh, that way um, or you can actually get those nice block offs um, which and, and my mirrors are right there with the green monster I don't know if you guys have ever tasted that green monster but holy to do super good other things, other things. What else did I do? I, I checked the radiator fluid. I actually changed the radiator fluid. I was using water wetter. I was using this stuff. Um, and uh, I changed it to this stuff, engine ice. Um, I, I like this stuff better. Uh, and uh, I also keep this bucket with me uh, with extra fluids. This bucket goes with me for the track day, but we'll get to all that stuff over there. Um, other things that you want to do is uh, check your tires to make sure that they're in relatively good condition. So, and I don't know if you can see it or not, but there is a wear mark, at least on these Q3 plus pluses, there's a wear mark on um, inside of the tread. And what you're doing is you want to make sure that your tread it has not worn down to those marks. Oh, one thing that's super duper important 
uh, because you're going to be breaking hard. You're, you're certainly going to be breaking hard, so you want to make sure that your brake pads are have plenty of pads still left on them. You don't want to go out there and crash, basically, not be able to slow down because you don't have any brake pads. Same thing goes with the rear. You're gonna use more front tire or front brakes than you're going to use rear brakes, but you definitely wanna check to make sure that both sets of pads have enough. And if, even if it's close, just replace them. Even if it's close, just replace them. Why? Because you're gonna be going fast. You're gonna be going faster than you normally go unless you're a freaking fool that drives super fast on, on the highway. But if this is your first track day, you're more than likely going to be going faster than you've ever gone before, if you're a smart rider. Anyway, what other things do you do? I take off my license plate. I also, on the R1, I also unplug the rear tail light. They're gonna ask you to Un either unplug it or tape over it. They're certainly gonna ask you to tape over it. Generally, I just unplug it. So let's talk about, on the side of my bike here, underneath this panel, are the connections to the headlights. And I undo the headlights so these two aren't on. These, I leave on. And now, some uh, racing organizations are going to ask you to tape up all of your glass areas of your lights and your rear lights. Um, they're going to ask you to tape it up. The organizations that I go on, they haven't asked me to tape it up yet. So when I take my license plate off, there's this gap down here. I normally tape that gap up. And so also, with regards, I manufactured this uh, rear uh, camera base, and normally what they've asked me to before in the past is when I mount my camera that I uh, run some tie wire uh, on that and kind of wire it in. And I got this stuff at a store called Harbor Freight, and it was like eight bucks. It was a fantastic buy. You want to make sure that your radiator is in good shape. And I'm gonna go get a flashlight. Hold on one second. Stay right there, gosh. I be tripping sometimes. Be tripping all the time, huh? Okay, so you can see how you get a lot of rubber clumps, like the stuff that's on these tires, but, but bigger, and rocks that get flung up here. And I'm gonna go through the painstaking uh, process of straightening up all of those bent fins so that the air can flow through my radiator properly. With that said, you don't necessarily need a radiator protection grill, but it's a good idea to get it at some point if you plan on doing a lot of track days. Obviously, you wanna make sure that your, your, uh, specific bolts that need to be back tight are tight uh, for example you don't want your rear sets falling off so uh, it's a good idea to make sure that these are torqued down properly you want to make sure that your front axle bolt is torqued down properly uh, your rear axle bolt is, is, is torqued down properly it's a, it's a good idea to make sure maybe you can clean your chain and make sure that You've, you've got the proper amount of uh, your chain is loose enough. One of the things that I have heard happen sometimes is this bolt right here will come off and, and <laughs> you won't be able to shift your, uh, your uh, bike. So make sure that those are um, all torqued down properly. You don't necessarily need to go through the whole bike and check all of it your particular bolts or, or torque down, um, but some of the important ones, it's a good idea to. Another thing is, if you have, if you have weights on your tire, and this rear tire, I've got, this rear tire is so balanced 
rear tire. This is the second tire that the second Q3 that I've put on that I didn't have to put a weight on my tire. It balanced out perfectly. Now my front tire has weights. And what they're gonna ask you to do is tape up your weights. See, so I've got some black tape on here. So my race, or the, not race organization, but the, the track organizations that I go to, they check for that. Um, it might be a good idea to bring some cardboard and a beatbox so you could break dance. In between sessions, if you feel like you got enough energy, oh, that's always a good idea. What else? You may want to bring an actual bike stand and uh, a front wheel chalk. I generally don't, it's not that big of a deal to me, uh, but a lot of guys do, especially if you have those fancy dancy uh, tires they call slicks that need those fancy dancy tire warmers. I use these Q3s. I use the Q3 pluses because they're a fantastic tire and I can't outride them at this point, you know? And I'll probably even use them all the way into when I get, when I move up into the A group, which is the fastest group. In California, they have, they have three groups. They have the A group, the B group, and the C group. And the C group is generally the group that's starting out and just learning and just trying to have fun. And, and then the B group is the group in between, the fastest group and the group that's just kind of learning. I'm in the B group. It doesn't really matter what group you're in as long as you have fun. And that's the important part. On some tracks, you have a, uh, a DB decibel level that you can't surpass. Uh, we have that here at Laguna. Um, so if you have a DB suppressor for your exhaust system, you may want to bring that just in case the race organization tries to say, hey, you know, your bike is too loud. <laughs> whatever I haven't had that problem I haven't ridden at Laguna and I know that what most people do is just upshift where the sensor is because everybody everybody knows where the sensor is it's going up the hill towards the back side of the track and everybody just generally upshifts into uh, third or fourth or fifth gear usually fourth or fifth gear and keeps it in doesn't is not screaming their bike and that generally gets them past that and then once close to tipping down and going into that little swervy deal, whatever that thing is, um, they're back normal and, and on the go. So something that you may want to think about. What else? I think that just about covers what's going on with your bike. How to protect yourself, right? How to protect yourself. You're going to need a set of leathers. I have an Alpine Star set of leathers. It's a nice set of leathers. It has elbow protection. It has uh, obviously sliders. It's a one-piece leather suit. Going to a track, they are, um, they're going to require that you have a set of leathers. It could be a toothpiece or a one-piece, but you're gonna to have to have that because it's a safety precaution. Uh, sets of leathers have elbow protection, knee protection, hip protection, all that stuff built in. And so that's super important for your safety. You're also going to need a nice set of boots that has uh, protection on it. I, my boots are CD boots and I really, really like them. They're new to me. I had before that, prior to that Alpine Star uh, and I like those boots also, but you are going to want a nice set of boots. Uh, you're going to want a nice helmet, the lightest helmet that you can get. This helmet right here, I absolutely love. It's a LS2 helmet. It's carbon fiber. It's beautiful and it is light. And I love it because it's so light. It also has, when I'm, when I'm leaned over, it also has a really large window. Uh, it allows me to look up and, and see a lot of things. You're also gonna want, uh, here's my left hand glove. You're also gonna want a nice set of gloves that has a heel protection for your, for your hand. Cause this, is, this actually is a, a piece of rubber, or a hard piece of rubber in case I hit the ground, it's going to slide and not jam my hand and cause my wrist to roll. So when you get a set of gloves, you're gonna look, you're gonna wanna look for that to make sure that your set of gloves has that. Uh, <laughs> this, this, this pair has also a windshield wiper on the pinky. Never used it before, but that's kinda cool. It also has padding 
uh, along the wrist bone, right? This wrist bone right here. So this has got padding along the wrist bone. It's got uh, knuckle protection, finger protection. So this is a good pair of gloves. I really, really like those gloves. Uh, cameras, cameras. This is a camera mount that I have that I built. I also have this carrying case that I keep my cameras. I have two cameras and this is the mount that goes on to the back for my new uh, Insta360. My GoPro uh, goes on on my helmet right here with this stupid ass freaking mic brick. Um, man, anyway, I'm not, I'm not even gonna address it, but I've got all my stuff in here. I got my battery chargers. On this side are the batteries. Actually three cameras. I have the Insta360. I have a Drift, which I absolutely love. And then I've got this GoPro that I'm shooting this video on. Uh, the go this GoPro, I mean, if I'm being honest, it's stability is freaking fantastic. Freaking fantastic. Um, and the stability on uh, the Insta360 is really good also. Uh, my, my Drift Ghost was the first camera that I got and it was before they really perfected the stability thingamabob. So uh, they have other cameras out now that, that are, are pretty good at that. Uh, but I think the GoPro is probably the best. This is a, what is this, a Go, this is a GoPro 7. They're now at nine or whatever the hell they are, eight. Certainly I know they're at eight. Uh, but you're gonna wanna bring uh, your cameras and your ability to charge them, right? Unless you have a ton of batteries like I do, but I still bring this stuff anyway. What else? You're gonna wanna pop up. For that pop-up, I bring bungees, okay? I bring bungees because you're gonna wanna make sure that your pop-up doesn't pop away. So, fuel. You're gonna wanna bring five gallons of fuel. Last thing you wanna do is run out of fuel. Uh, if you run out of fuel, they won't come get you until your session is over with. Let's talk about sessions since, since you brought it up, Smash. The way track days go, at least here in California, for at least the, the two places that I've been to is at Thunder Hill and Button Willow, is they have three groups. They have the A group, which is the fastest group, and they go out for the first 20 minutes of an hour. Then after that first 20 minutes is over with, then B group goes out. They go out for 20 minutes. And then C group go out, goes out for 20 minutes. So everybody gets 20 minutes within an hour. And then they start to cycle over again, right? Up to 12 o'clock. Then they have lunch from 12 to 1. And then they start the cycle over again. So you need to know what group you're in. And you need to try and pay attention to what group is out on the track and how much time. And they normally have calls, you know, over the loudspeaker. At least the, 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 the two tracks that I've been, they have a loudspeaker and they give you they give you a call. So when you get there in the morning, they also have what's called a riders meeting. And in the riders meeting, um, it's usually pretty early in the morning. <laughs> so they have this riders meeting and they talk about all of the flags. They talk about if you see this flag, what do you do? If you see this flag, what do you do? If you have a fall down, what do you do? In the riders meeting, they go over that. And then if it's your first track day, Right, they'll have another C group meeting and in that meeting they'll talk about what turns might be tricky, what pace you may want to go at certain turns. You'll go out with um, instructors and they'll pace you and you'll ride in a single file line so you can 
get kind of your bearings on the track, which is kind of a nice little deal. So if you're if it's your first time, don't be too nervous. Be I'm gonna break up. I can't do this. I'm gonna break up. I want to break up. I don't want to do this. Yeah. I'm gonna break up. I can't do this. They do whatever they can to make sure that you have an enjoyable day, okay? Uh, let's go over here and talk about some of the important things that you're gonna need. Um, one thing that you're gonna want is a bike pump, okay? You're gonna want this, and you're gonna want this. So those are two things that you, what is that, Major? What is that? Those are two things that you're gonna want in your track day toolkit. So you wanna get a gauge that you trust, and then you only wanna use your gauge. You don't wanna use somebody else's gauge. Um, so whatever gauge you check your tire pressure with, use that gauge for the rest of the day. Even if it's one of your friend's gauge, use it for the rest of the day. So you can monitor your tire pressure and know how hot your tires get are getting. They should increase in temperature three to four, maybe five PSI. The tire guys there at your track day will have a board that shows the recommended PSI for a, a bunch of different tires. And there's a pretty good chance your tires are going to be on that. And normally they're giving you cold tire pressures and sometimes they give you hot tire pressures, but it's really important that you make sure that your tire pressures are, are proper based on the recommendations for, the, for your first session. What else might you want? Um, uh, I bring a tender, you know, I also, uh, you bring tape. Remember how I talked about needing some, some track organizations require you to tape up your, your uh, lights and stuff? Have some nice tape, some nice durable tape. Bring that. I have, um, I bring a bunch of different tools just in case. I, obviously I bring some Allen wrenches. I bring regular wrenches. I bring a flashlight. I bring, I don't necessarily need this anymore, but I bring it in case somebody else needs it because guess what? <laughs> Yo, oh boy, oh yeah. I can't wait to try that out. I finally got a rear shock that is suitable for my weight. I'm 6'4", and I weigh 230 pounds. Finally got a, uh, a spring and a rear shock that is really designed for, for my weight. So I'm super excited about that. So this little thing right here has a bunch of, um, of the plastic little uh, fittings for the, for the uh, all the plastic on the peak on the bike. I have a a tape measure in case somebody need, wants to check their uh, suspension, their sag. Uh, I have a torque wrench uh, just in case somebody needs to torque down something. Um, I have a a big ratchet uh, and my rear axle uh, socket just in case something happens to my tire and I need to replace my tire. Uh, so try and think of all the things that you think you might need for your track day because you don't generally want to get there and not have a good day because you don't have something that you need. Last but not least, you're going to want to need to bring one of those, okay? Uh, and you're going, to want to, you're going to want to stuff it with ice. You're going to want to stuff it with drinks. You're going to want to stuff it with snacks. You're gonna wanna uh, bring some, some towels that you can throw in there and, and cool yourself off. Like this is uh, one of my favorite towels to do that with. On hot track days, when you stick your towel in all of that ice and you're able to wipe your face off after you just got off of your uh, session, man, that feels good. It feels really good. Also, you're gonna want a nice, comfortable chair that you can sit down in. Uh, this one, Whew. this old rocking chair. Ah, oh, man, it's a good one. I hope that I've given you enough information so that you can get out to the track, you'll have everything that you need, and you have a blast on your first track day. 
Man. Because if you do, you're going to be experiencing something that not a lot of people experience. And I'm excited for you. All right. Have a blessed day.